Uh, we're talking to Ari Fleischer, who's here. Um, this is kind of old home week, isn't it? I mean, you were there in 95. I was. During the shutdown. Do um, you think we're heading that way again? I sure hope not. And, and I think one of the things that Republicans have got going for in this year is they need to learn one of the lessons of 95 and know when to declare victory. They're yeah. doing great. The fact that we are talking about how to cut spending as opposed to reduce the rate of growth. Yeah. Republicans are doing what we've always talked about doing. We are cutting spending. Give us the Senate. Give us the White House. We'll do more. But for one third of the government, they're doing great. Well, how much are they cutting? Well, the talks now, and nobody knows for sure, but they're yeah. talking about between 30 and 40 billion dollars of one year. And here's another little kicker in this one year to put in perspective. The year we're talking about. Began on September, um, October yeah, 1st, over. 2010. They're focusing this is already, a leftover I guess from last the challenge year. is they're focusing on about 10, 11 percent of the budget of the discretionary domestic spending. Uh, are they going to have the guts to expand it out and talk about Social Security, Medicare, yeah, Medicaid, Pentagon spending, where the real money is? Sure they will, and that's coming next week. You've seen that from Congressman Paul yeah. Ryan, the chairman of the House Budget Committee. He's already said he's going to do it. The Republicans are now doing what they always said they were going to do. No. They are actually trying to make real reductions. What they, did, what they didn't do uh, from 2001 to 2009 when they lost power. What, what's happening um, between Boehner and the freshmen right now? It seems like there's a real split. Again, that happened between Gingrich and us when we were there. This is, this is it's democracy. And isn't, it, isn't it funny? Newt, by the way, and you'll, you'll get this joke. Newt was always sort of shooting at us for yeah. being too conservative. Uh, now we were shooting at Newt, too. Well, we were. We were. Uh, but now Newt goes back to the Hill, and he's trying to side with the freshmen and actually yeah. making Boehner's life more difficult. Were you surprised he did that? Well, look, there, there's, in our system, there's always going to be an inherent tension. And that's part of caucus politics. The Democrats have on their side, Republicans have on theirs. At the end of the day, though, the test is for them to come together and do something for Were the country. Were you surprised, though, that Gingrich went up to the Hill and undermined John Boehner? I don't think he undermined John he Boehner. He undermined John Boehner. He made John Boehner's job more difficult than you know it. Well, he went up there and said you should hold out for as much as you can. And, and right. I think they know that. They don't have new, need Newt to tell them that. But the, the real test for the freshmen is at what point will they say, all right, we will declare victory. The yeah. art of knowing when and how to declare victory is a huge part of being successful in this yeah. business. All right. Yeah. You know what? Let's let's go right to uh, the Newt Gingrich. I'm just going to skip ahead here because obviously you guys just mentioned he was on Capitol Hill yesterday, uh, and he was urging Republican freshmen to stick to their principles. Chris, do we have that sound bite? Here is Gingrich on the Hill. Their goal should be to avoid a shutdown while not giving in on their core principles. They, they, they can't walk into a room and have President Obama think that, they are, that they can be blackmailed by yelling the word shutdown. So I, I think they should seek to keep the government open. Uh, I think that they should try to find ways to pass continuing resolutions that can be signed. But I don't think they can allow President Obama to reject the outcome of the 2010 election and dictate on his terms what he'll do. Bring uh, back memories, or <laughs> not good, not good. Oh, I mean, he Joe. was, uh, he was. Uh, I think Ari would even admit when he was speaker, he was a volatile leader. You never knew <laughs> what was going to happen. You would be in the middle of a fight, and you would, you almost would win that fight, and then he would say, "Well, we might not have shut down the government if they'd given me a better seat on the airplane." And then we'd all be cleaning that up for two or three. But you weeks. know, I was in a lot of those meetings, and, and the voice of calm and the voice and reason. Almost all those meetings, one guy really did stand up to Newt. Who's that? John Boehner. Boehner did? Yes, he did. Wow. He was the head of the Republican conference at the time, and he would talk to Newt about the things Newt was doing wrong. Newt didn't often like to hear it. John had the courage to do it. And so now uh, Newt's getting back at him. <laughs> <laughs> so John meets him. Uh, talking about Boehner. We're all, I, we were talking yesterday. We were surprised by how John Boehner has been a steadying influence. Nobody really expected that from him. Uh, under us, I, I know I certainly underestimated him. I didn't think he would do as well as he's done, but he has been a steadying force uh, for this Republican caucus. Yes, and I think the one reason for it is he has to balance the freshmen who make you all look like establishmentarians. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of firebrands, and to maintain order, right, he's got to be uh, stronger, or he looks as though he's been, uh, I think, taken out by the, the new guys. How serious a problem is that, Ari? I mean, well, it's yes. a big media story, but is, is the Tea Party faction really tugging at the, at the more moderate elements if, of the if House? If saying that the government spends too much money and we need to spend less makes someone a firebrand, then I want more fire. 
What's wrong with saying that? They should be saying it. We need to hear it. And the Republican Party needed the kick in the pants that they're giving. They still have to learn the art of compromise because that is what our American system is built on. So they'll have to get to that point. It's still a test. But I love what they're doing. Is that divide real, though, in the House between the Tea Party element and the more moderate Republicans? <clears throat> sure, but that's going to always be a faction between the conservatives and the moderates or the liberals and the moderates. It's inherent in our democracy. And, and it's it actually is, healthy. It's just not this that, is how we debate ideas. It's not that big of a deal. I, it's really not. I, uh, one of the problems with during the Bush years is everybody fell right in line behind Bush. Well, that was and, okay. And there, you didn't mind that. There wasn't that divide, and we saw the deficit explode for a lot of different reasons. But everybody was being friends with everybody. The Bush administration was going along with the, the appropriation chairman. It was a nightmare. Actually, when you have this sort of friction, I, I'll also say it's what Nancy Pelosi did not have. Too many people fell in line with Nancy Pelosi and didn't stand up to her and say, you know what, stop picking fights with the intelligence community. Here... This is a very positive thing. I think it's very positive, John, where you've got Republicans fighting it out among themselves. They get to the right number, and then they have this. And it's also good, and Newt would do this. This is the one thing Newt did well during the 90s. He would play us, the freshmen, the firebrands, off of Clinton. Say, I can't control him. I just, you know what? Scarborough was crazy. He sets his hair on fire in every caucus right. meeting. I can't control him. Right. That is actually a very good tool for a speaker, where he can say, come on, together, we we got to work this out. But do you, do you agree that Boehner looks more moderate, more statesmanlike because of the atmospherics and the reality of the Tea Party? It puts him in a good position. And, and, and Newt's problem was he had us. He could have played off of us better with the press already, but it was usually Newt that we were having to clean up well, after. And Boehner doesn't make those mistakes, right. those unforced errors that Newt always made. Boehner doesn't make them. The power of the speaker is best used if it's diffuse. If you can accumulate right. it all in your one body, it's too much, it will collapse any speaker, collapse Newt. John Boehner has dispersed it around. He's opened up the debate, and that's made him more powerful. But yeah. here's who we're not talking about here. Where's Barack Obama in all this? Where's Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid in all yeah. this? We're all saying, where are the Republicans in Congress? Can't they deliver the entire government? They are one-third of the government. One third, Harry right. Reid has been given a hall pass for governance. He's not doing anything. Well, Mika, let, 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 let me ask him. you that, Mika. And where's Barack Obama? He's our leader. So, where's he forging so, the agreement? So, Mika, we've, we've been pushing the Republicans now for four or five months, saying, are they going to do it? Are they going to have the guts? We're going to find out next week. Paul mm -hmm. Ryan's going to put the budget out. I look forward to that. And that answer, we're going to have that answer, because they're going to, you look at the prelim, preliminary numbers, Wow, they're going there. Now, here's the next question. Do you think Barack Obama is going to have the courage to do what, uh, mm. who, who's, who's here all the time saying he's going to do it three months from now? Um, Halpern. Halpern. Mark Halpern. Grand bargain. Mark Halpern's been predicting the grand bargain for five years now. But <laughs> will Barack Obama have the courage to go after, to save uh -huh. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and Pentagon spending. Sure, I think he has the courage to do it. I think also, though, politically, your advice would be to uh, look at the Republicans and to say, okay, this is your platform. Okay, Mika, so this has been your message. You've been saying this, Talk Mika. it up. Hey, no, okay. okay. Mika, well, hold on a second. Just stop, 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 stop. Okay? They're doing that. Yeah, the, well, They're going to do that I, next week. Um, so here's my question, Mika. We'll see. Stay with me. Yeah. After they do that. Is Barack Obama, because it's going to be put up or shut up time for Barack Obama, is he going to do what Democrats like Bill Clinton have done in the past and demagogue the issue, or is he going to actually come forward? Do you think he will come forward with reductions in Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security? I think he's going to have to make the very difficult decision, which is never clear, to make responsible cuts, to make responsible cuts and also keep this country moving forward. Do you think he'll do that? In entitlements? I have no idea whether he'll do that or not. We'll see what the Republicans come up with first. It really depends on what they come up with. And so mm -hmm. far, their cuts have been only what everybody else hasn't had the guts to do, which is from that little piece of the pie that really does affect the future of this country and okay. gets in the way. And it doesn't uh, attack the ask, real core of the problem. I ask you, Joe, how much does the 2012 presidential race play into his decision about whether or not to go after I think, that? We've seen taking things away from potential voters. I think it's the most moment of truth. I really do. I think it, it is a moment of truth for Barack Obama. He's talked about himself. He, he likes to think of himself as the smartest man, not only in the room, but in Washington, D.C. He is the professor who is above it all. He is the one. He Oh, 
talk radio and bloggers and cable news. I'm above all of that. They're children. Well, now is his chance. He's going to get a chance, and we're going to see whether he is... The, the transcendent figure that he likes to think himself well, actually, as, I think as we're being, see if the Republicans are not are true to the their Republicans, platform. Mika, it's it's obvious, and it's out there already. And we've had we've had Cantor come on, we've had Ryan come on, saying everything we've had is Boehner on the table. Come on, no, no, they have specifically said we're going to go after Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Pentagon spending. They have all said it. They've said they're going after entitlement. So, John yeah. Meacham, you're a presidential you're exactly historian that. of sorts. Does this president, do you think he's going, this is his moment. First of all, would you agree with me? This is his moment. And we're going to see whether he is serious or not about taking care of this country economically. I think that, yes, I think that this year, given uh, the sta basic stabilization after the 08, 09, and the fact, and I keep talking about this, the Simpson-Bowles deal, mm -hmm. suggestions, Gives everybody cover. Oh, but that's what he, he rejected all of them. They were they were his right, ideas. He rejected them all. I do agree with that. And I think that that is a, a huge thing. And this is why the tag the, the stuff we're talking about is the reason twenty percent of the country thinks we're on the right track because they don't care about the Republican caucus doing X and the president you know doing. Okay, y. but if you they were writing a, a, a book on Barack Obama, right? And, uh, you know, past this prologue, you know, for, for most presidents, you, you can tell what they're going to do in office based on their character before they get in office. Judging over the past two years, judging over his past 20 years, is this a president that's going to have what it takes to tell the American people the truth? That, that, that this is just math. The numbers don't add up for Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. My fear in this is that this could be a not particularly successful teach-in, <laughs> if you're talking about past his prologue, that the president is extremely uh, analytical, and as we all know, we, you know, he can tell you every side and every element of an issue. He prides himself on being able, as he puts it, to argue your position the way you would do it, mm -hmm. so that he shows that he cares and he understands. But at some point, and this is the to answer it historically, at some point you have to pass something and you have to get involved in the nitty gritty of the politics. And right now we are very clear that the president sees everything, but no, he has not yet stepped in. And here, and here are, are you expecting to step forward on entitlements and defense spending? I, I sure hope so, but I've seen no reason in what he's done to make anybody think he will. Gallup just came out with a new poll and the, amount of the number of people who think he's a strong leader is dropping and dropping fast. And this is one reason why. I, I spent 15 years in the legislative branch, two and a half in the executive, and the facts are if the president doesn't lead, it doesn't get done. Why, why are the president's And he had a fall? commission on entitlements, as you just pointed out, and he ignored it when it came out. His State of the Union was another chance to show leadership and say he's going to tackle this and we must get it done. He gave it lip service in the State of the Union. Now we'll find out next week where the president is. So far, his record is being a punter on all these big issues. He waits, he pauses, he holds his cards close to his vest, and he acts too late. Too little, too late, or not at all. On the budget, if he doesn't do it, it won't happen. So you guys are absolutely clear there are going to be very, very complete significant cuts to entitlements in the Republican plan. Well, the interesting thing about yes, entitlements, what you can do is there, increase the rate of growth at a slower pace, especially on Social Security. There'll be more money spent on Social Security, just not as much more. Mm -hmm. And in Washington, they call it a cut. In the real world, it's just called a slower hey, increase. Yeah, and you and raise, they can get the job done in Social Security. Let me, yeah. ask you, let me ask you, Mika, going to break, why, is, why are the president's numbers falling? You know, he was at 50% after the grand bargain in December. He's now at about 44, 45%. And a lot of a lot of the other numbers, like well, already you, said. Would you say those down. numbers are relative to history low? No, no, no. I no, think, it's I think he's low. about where he is, okay. uh, where Reagan was in 83. And, of course, Reagan won 49 states. I'm comparing, though, Mika, to where he was He's also behind where Carter was. Right. And I'm just, I'm just wondering, he's when Carter was. I'm just wondering what, what's happened over the past I, month. I, look, I think, uh, I think actually people don't feel much about the Libya intervention. I think they feel a lot about, oh, no, this is going to be more of the same, which is unemployment, difficult housing market, problems here at home, a crumbling infrastructure, 
and it just feels like we're putting off again the priorities at home. And I, I'm not speaking for myself, but I'm, I'm speaking for what I hear out on the road from a lot of people. When I ask people at events that we go to how they feel about the direction of this country, and if they're happy, nobody, nobody. raises their hand. Nobody, nobody raises that their hand. That ends up falling on the president, whether mm -hmm. it's fair or not. And by the way, just for the record, that, that's not Mika's point of view. I've got the White House talking points right here. <laughs> they just came in, and that's not on there. I So, Willie, this was not what you... Okay, Jay Carney to Mika. Yeah, mm. exactly. To Mika. Yeah.